Hey, Ben McClintock here from DefendingItUtah.org. Just recently, we came out with a very special presentation called Should Christians uh, Obey the Government? Always Obey the Government. And um, it was a lot of work, a lot of effort. We hope you enjoyed it. And please, if you haven't seen it yet, um, go back to one of the previous uh, videos. Also, make sure you're sharing it on all your social media uh, channels. Um, but there was a lot of effort that went into it, and we couldn't uh, put into the video the interviews, the full interviews with all of the people that took part in that, with myself, with Dr. Bradley, with uh, Joe Wolverton. And so um, what I wanted to do here was give Joe's full interview um, and so that you could watch the whole thing because it's got a lot of gems in there that just couldn't be placed in the full video. So just think of this as a special features to our video on uh, Should Christians Obey the Government? And so without further ado, Joe Wolverton. Every day I get un, you know, maybe 20, 30 messages from people saying, I'm very disappointed in you, Joe, because you are an active member of the church and yet you're encouraging people to break the law. And every day I answer those people and say, I've never encouraged anyone to break the law. I've encouraged people to resist tyranny, which I believe is my moral obligation. And of course, you have members of the church who say, well, what about the 12th article of faith, wherein we uh, are obliged to sustain, support, uphold the law? And I say, yes, I do that. And the key distinction is how you define the word the law. And to me, the law is a word with a sacred definition. To me, mankind was placed here on earth by God with our agency for the purpose of working out our salvation. That includes knowing who to follow and who to resist. Now, in the case of the United States, we have a government wherein the people establish boundaries of the authority of those we choose to enact laws for us. If those people, whether they call themselves Congress or a state assembly or a state legislature or a president or a governor, if they exceed the boundaries of the consensual authority, then those things that they say are no longer law. They are simply declarations. As Cicero called them, they are simply the statements of a robber. Uh, Sidney went so far as to say, any edicts, any declarations, any acts of government that exceed the boundaries of its authority as defined by the people, by the governed, so to speak, then that thing is, and he called it the magna latrocinia, which in Latin means the great robbery, the grand robbery. So with regard to the 12th article of faith, heck yeah, I do obey the law 100%. But I recognize that if I am to obey the law, I had best recognize what is the law and what isn't the law. And I would suggest that members of the church maybe step away from the essential oils for a minute, okay? And maybe, you know, quit getting their gospel from videos and open up Doctrine and Covenants section 98, which I don't think anybody reads anymore. The Savior said in that, when it comes to the law of man, obey my law. And he commands us to obey that law, which is constitutional. And then he goes on to say, that which is more or less than this cometh of evil. So that's Jesus Christ commanding his church to ignore unconstitutional acts of the government. You can read it for yourself. Don't take, you won't take my word for it anyway. But go to Doctrine and Covenants section 98 and read what the Savior has to say about the law of man, the law of God, and which is evil and which he commands you to obey. 
It's so simple, anyone should understand it. But like the, uh, what is it, the dwarves in uh, the last battle of Narnia, they're sitting there at noon claiming it's dark. They've been offered a feast and claim, and they think they're being fed garbage. And Peter goes to Aslan and says, hey, wake them up. Show them that they're being fed a feast. Show them that you've returned and that it's noon and everything's set right again. And Aslan said, they wouldn't believe me if I told them. And so I interpret that to mean Jesus has said in section 98, his will concerning the law of man and the law of God and what we are to obey. But Latter-day Saints don't read it, okay? But with regard to the 12th article of faith, I can't know if I'm sustaining and obeying the law if I don't know the definition of the law. And the law has a specific definition. And I'll end as I began. The law are those acts of a lawmaking body that are made within the boundaries of the consensual authority granted to that body by the people whose right it is to rule themselves. Now, we elect people to make laws for us, but anything exceeding the boundaries of authority granted by the people is simply an act of a robber, and that person who makes that act purporting and pretending that it is the law should be treated as any robber would be. Now, if we are to talk about the book of Romans and Paul's injunction to subject ourselves to the government, you cannot tell me that you believe an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ would command Christians to obey immorality of the sort displayed by Nero Caligula. You cannot tell me that. There is no way he meant that. I think Paul was doing as the Savior did. He was saying, if someone is acting as a magistrate, that is to say, he is doing those things a magistrate has the authority to do, then yes, you are subject to obey him. I mean, do you mind if I open up Romans? Is that okay? I would love to read directly. I'm going to read uh, from, I'm not going to read from King James because so many people don't read from King James anymore. Uh, I'm going to read from the, uh, how about we just do the, the new revised standard version that so many read from. And I'll go to Romans and let's see, there we go. All right, so let every person be subject to the governing authorities. Now listen to, why do you glide over the next bit, Christians? Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God. So you're telling me that God, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and cannot look on sin with the least degree of allowance, is going to somehow give authority to a Caligula, a Nero, a Claudius, and then command Christians to follow those men whose commandments 
were of the vilest and darkest hues, whose laws would have caused them to commit the greatest immoralities. There is no authority except from God. And those authority that, that exist have been instituted of God. There you go. So you have to know what authority means. Authority means the right to author, the right to create. Christians, do you honestly think that the capital C creator would command us to give blind and unquestioning obedience to men whose every second of life is of the vilest and most unchristian, unholy, and immoral hue? No. The issue here is just the same as knowing what is the law and what isn't. It's my opinion, if it's in the Bible, it's sacred. The definition of the law is sacred. The definition of authority is sacred. Not every man who manages to get above other men and have some sort of power to command them is an authority instituted by God. That, that makes no sense. That would require Christians to stop thinking for themselves and to blindly follow men who, if they literally followed them, would lead them to hell. So Christians, learn what the definition of authority is before you bring Paul as a witness to your bizarre desire to make yourselves subject to satanic despots. Because I can tell you one thing, Paul will not answer that subpoena. He will not show up and support you in your immoral, slavish obsession with supporting tyrants and their satanic edicts.